Well, it's nice to see the mailbox got repaired. Uh, if you guys don't already know, I don't know if it was vandalism or an accident, but nonetheless, somebody come by and whacked it this week and they knocked off the mailbox and that little part there that it sets on. And uh, it's all been fixed and repaired now, but uh, it was really mean that someone just knocked it off and left it lay there. I will attach a picture and show you what Ellie sent to me. Something else that looks a little bit weird. This is the old place for our deliveries. It's all been taken down and they moved deliveries further on up the driveway. Trying to keep things safe. We've had so many packages go missing, friends. So this is the new location for packages. Leave all deliveries and packages here, which is pretty clever. And then the way that the UPS guy does it, he pulls right up to where the gate is closed. He kind of turns in like I'm doing here. And then they have to make this U-turn. And I think that they've left them plenty of space. No one's complained yet. No driver, UPS or Amazon, has complained about it yet. And so I'm guessing all of the vans that come in here and drop off have had no problems whatsoever. You can see, now of course I'm in Jamie's car, but uh, it's easy enough. That's all there is to it. And then back out the driveway they go. Hmm. Can anyone tell me what all of that is? Those are turtles. There are turtles in the water like crazy and there's a whole bunch of them in that one little cluster. So we do have dye for this pond. I think I may go ahead and dye the pond right now. Uh, it looks like Ellie and Megan have cleaned out the canoe. Thank you for that, Ellie and Megan. I will take the canoe now and go ahead and spread out the dye. Or I'll have Ellie do it, not real sure. It's something that he needs to learn how to do, but uh, I don't mind doing it while I'm here. We also have rain coming. Guys, look at that. What is that bobbling around in the water? You see what I'm looking at, right? There are several things bobbing around in the water right there in front of me. I hope those are not snakes that are breeding. If that's a cluster of snakes that are breeding, that's gonna be very, very scary. And that might, there they just went under. And that might have just changed my plans for putting the dye into the water. No, there are heads bobbing up. There's a lot of heads bobbing up right there. I know you can't see it. I know you can't see it. I'm not gonna scare you all. But uh, we're gonna get rain this week. And I think having that dye and then algae side in the water before the rain is going to be better. It'll help mix it all in well. So I'll take care of that while I'm here. Everything else looks fine. I, I have to stop doing this though. What I do, even though I shouldn't, is every time I come up in here, I always look around to see what's wrong, what's not been done, what could I do differently, what could I do and that's not my role. I have to let that go. But how does one ever let that go? Seriously, how does one ever let that go? The home, the yard, the land, it's in my blood, y'all. It's in my blood. And even though I am very happy that Ellie and Megan 
are taking an active role and making it their own, how does one ever just let it go? Answer me that. And am I, am I within my rights to still try to quote unquote hold on to it? I don't think that I am. I don't. I'll talk to you about a few things. This is the football field that I built for LE when he was seven or eight years old. It later became a soccer field whenever he evolved into playing soccer more than football. These trees were planted to be the borders, the, the out of bounds. Now, things have changed over the years as we've stopped playing football, we end up getting more animals, the fences moved out and things have changed. But do you know there's a time when way over there was a football goalpost with lights. There was another one right here, a goalpost where we would kick field goals. And this yard has always been a special place for me. It still is. And I don't even live here. What do you think? It was awesome. Happy 11th birthday. Thank you. You know, your dad loves you very much. And I can't wait until birthday number 12. Uh -huh. Cool? Yep. <laughs> Walking around the side of the house. Now, of course, this is where Jamie's had her raised bed garden. The same place that before that, we used to have a basketball court here on that concrete. There was also a pool that sat here for many years, our swimming pool. We used to have our trampoline right over here in the shade where me and the boys would wrestle and play. Now it's all become kind of a chicken coop and a, and a garden area, which is wonderful. That's what they do. That's what they do. And it's become theirs. It's no longer mine. And I have to, at some point, just kind of let that go. Everyone knows how special the barn house is to me, the barn dominium we call it. This was, this used to be my barn, guys. You see all of the barns here now, the carport, the barns, but you do know that there was a time when this was the only barn. This here was the ramp that I would use to drive up my, my lawnmower, my tractor, my side-by-side. -side. There was no face on it. This over here was all opened and I would drive right up onto it using this ramp. And of course, everyone knows that after Hurricane Harvey came and flooded my original home, then this was converted into my home. And here it sets. The backside of the barn house, which is now my bedroom and bathroom, this used to be the chicken area where the chickens lived. I, there's so much history here. And all of this was a covered, was a covered area where the animals would come up and, and rest and get their water. This is their shade. This was their awning and their shade and their watering hole. Hush it up, Rocky. I ain't even talking about you. Jamie and I were so excited when we got the carport built. We could park our vehicles in here. We paid to have automatic garage door openers put in so we could kind of like pull up and drive in. Uh, the kids, the kids have no desire to use this place at all. They do not want to park inside here. So instead, we've kind of made this our, an extra place for hay, an extra place for storage. Uh, everyone remembers this here, right? It's just become an extra place, an extra place for stuff. 
which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone needs to be able to utilize, you know, their, their space for what they want to do with it. But uh, it's just so crazy how things have changed. Hey, there you are. I'm just talking about how things have changed over the years. Well, yeah. How you doing, son? I'm doing good. How about you? Good. All right, so walking around back. Hi, sweetie. You do know that you have one more week here, right? One more week. We're going to have the Tina, our alpaca shearer, is going to come on Saturday, the 13th. And she's going to shear all of the alpaca. And Indy will be loaded up along with our sweet Starla. And, oh boy, here it goes. Along with Annie. And we're going to be taking Annie and Indy, who are going to be freshly shorn along with Starla to Longhorn Lester's. Now, I'm going to tell you now what you're about to scream at me. What about Ernie? What about Oki? Oki and Ernie are both uncut. They Neither one have been neutered or castrated. And so we're at a little bit of a dilemma in how we're going to do this, but we do not want to leave any of our alpacas alone. They're a, they're a pack slash herd animal, and they need to have one of, at least one of their kind with them. So we're going to temporarily leave Oki and Ernie here, but they will be together. And that will help them adjust and be fine. They're both males and they'll be fine. At some point, we'll try to find a vet who can take care of them. And then we can make decisions later on how we do all of that. Hi. <laughs> Hello, handsome. He's like, Dad, are you talking about me? Wait, I got to get neutered? Yes, at some point you do. At some point you have to be, sir. And then uh, the reason we're taking Annie with us is because we want to make sure we have a partner for Indy. And you're going to say, Lester, Indy's fine. Indy's fine with the horses. She's always been with the horses and ponies. She's good. Yes, except for the fact that the horses slash ponies are already over at Longhorn Lester's. All of her friends are gone. Her friends are already gone, y'all. She needs to be back with her friends. And uh, we're going to take Annie with us because Annie cannot continue to be in the pasture with that little munchkin right there because he is becoming more and more uh, mature. We'll just say mature. And he's starting to experiment and play house or play doctor with anybody who will go out there with him. And we just don't want to have any issues. Last thing that you might not realize, but you should. Friends, you better hear this part. Ernie, who is his father, if Ernie ever sees him as a threat, Ernie will castrate him with his own teeth. You heard me correct. We do not want that to happen. So we have to be responsible. We have to manage our babies. And we're going to remove Annie and Indy so there's never a situation arise where we have Ernie trying to take care of him using his own teeth. All right? You have to just trust me on that one. Now, this is going to be all kinds of controversy. I can already hear it now. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to even allow all the nonsense. We're going to do this. We're going to try it out and see what happens. If we're wrong, then we will absolutely make things right. But we're the ones who feed them. We're the ones who care for them. We're the ones who house them. You're the ones who spend a few minutes every day just visiting, okay? So this is like raising kids. We don't tell you what to do with your kids or how to treat, you know. We try to tell you what we're doing. We show you what we're gonna do and why we're going to do it. And this is the decision that we've come to as a group. That's not just Jamie, not just me, not just Ellie, not just Megan, but the Sanctuary Committee as a whole. It's been talked about and discussed so much. You have no idea. 
this might be one of the biggest and hardest decisions we've ever had to make. The last thing I'll say about it is if you're sitting there right now saying, but Annie's going to miss Ernie. Ernie is her partner. That's not fair. Annie and Ernie, they're not humans. They don't understand relationships the way that you and I do. It's not like we're taking away one of, we're not taking away your spouse. It's not like that. It's her partner, y'all. But she has a new, she'll have a new partner. She will partner with her and Oki will partner with Ernie. And they'll remain in the pastures where they're more comfortable with all the babies. So just give us some time, let us figure it all out and we will let you know the good, the bad, and the ugly like we always do. All right, so if you wanna disagree, then you're more than welcome to. If you wanna call it now, then you can call it now, that's fine. We just ask that you remain polite and respectful in your comments. And this here's an example. Lester, I respectfully say that you're making a big mistake. Lester, I, as nice as I can say it, you don't know what you're doing when it comes to alpacas. Lester, what you don't understand is this could possibly happen, or you might. There's a, so many ways to be kind and respectful in things we don't understand and don't agree with. But we have to make this decision and it's been made. We've talked to a lot of people in the know, even alpaca people, y'all. And that's what's gonna happen. I just think that there's one last thing you might be aware of. If you don't already know this, RJ, who is about the same age as Indy, who was not, who had not been castrated, was doing all that same stuff that Oki's been doing. At some point, one of the other donkeys just had enough. And that donkey grabbed him by the neck, twisted him around, and broke his neck. The arms family lost their beloved RJ. Now, we know we have to get this donkey castrated. We know that has to happen. But we can calm down a whole lot of those hormones and emotions if we get the other alpacas <laughs> away from him. All right? So, that's what we're going to do, and that's why we're doing it. I don't know if I mentioned Starla, but we think that Starla is big enough, heavy enough now that she'll be able to come back and not be doing all the same escaping that she'd been doing before. Uh, a couple of things in the background. You may see the Argo. You may see the little tractor. Uh, I'm going to have L.E. talk about those in his video and explain to you what's going on with all of that stuff. I've kept you long enough. I want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for trying to be understanding. I know the wind is a factor. Sorry about that. We love you so very much, and we hope that you guys will continue to ride this journey out with us. And like I said, we've been wrong before, but we've also been right on a lot of things that we've disagreed on, you and I. So give us a chance to figure it all out, and uh, we will... We will let you know how it's all going. We'll bring you daily videos on what's working and what's not. And we can always come back and revisit things as we need to. Okay? We love you. I've never blown you a kiss, y'all. I've never blown you a kiss. Why did I do that? Okay. Love you. <laughs>